Amen, amen, amen. Good evening, good evening. Uh, this is Pastor Juan with Shield of Faith Baptist Church. Good to have you tuning in with us tonight. Amen for this Bible study. Amen. We are, of course, going to be looking at uh, 1st chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. We're going to be talking about it. Amen. And so it's good to have everyone online. Amen. Uh, Sister Vanessa, Elder Juan, Senior, Amen, Kizzy, Amen. Um, hey, it's good to see y'all online today, Amen. Um, <clears throat> Want to go ahead and begin with a, a few announcements, of course, and uh, then we'll get um, what God has laid on my heart for us to talk about this evening, Amen. All right. Uh, first of all, prayer requests. If you have any prayer requests, feel free to submit those through our church website, reallovokc.org, reallovokc.org, and, and I will be in prayer uh, with you. Amen. So feel free to do that anytime. So, man, our texting service, uh, and of course, the service now as well. Amen. You can subscribe by texting the key, uh, keyword real love to 84576. That is the keyword real love, one word, to 84576. Amen. Uh, giving online is available uh, through the church website. Uh, you simply go to the church website and uh, give online. Uh, it's available and the screen will pop up. You're able to uh, uh, give your tithes and offering as members and and uh, other donations for non-members, amen, for the furtherance of the uh, mission of Shield of Faith Baptist Church, amen. God is truly good. Also, if you have not received or downloaded the um, handout that we're going to be going through on Wednesday nights, it's available on the church website. Uh, that link is there in the comments, amen. So uh, feel free to uh, download that at any time so that you'll have those questions, amen. They are available there, again, in uh, the comments section of this video, and I'll try to put it in every 
uh, Wednesday night video just in case. Amen. You forget where you downloaded your copy. Amen. Uh, let's see. Uh, of course, we're dealing with holiness and hope in a hostile world on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock, new online gathering time, and Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock, uh, again, online gathering time. Amen. So any of our guests, feel free to join us uh, for those uh, opportunities turn online as we go through first Thessalonians, man. How's everybody doing this evening? Amen. Let me know that you are here. Say hello. Amen. Uh, hashtag live. Amen. If you're watching the replay, hashtag replay. Amen. Uh, let me know that you are here. Amen. You're doing great. I'm glad you are doing great. Amen. Um, it is just so much, <laughs> so much going on. So it's good that you are doing great. Amen. All right. Well, let's go ahead and and uh, begin with Bible study. Um, I know Sunday, amen, I've talked about, um, you know, looking at, the scripture text uh, that we're looking at, uh, we're taking uh, big chunks of scripture. And so <clears throat> we're take, taking big chunks of scripture. And, and so therefore, I'm not able to deal with every uh, nuance, uh, every aspect that the scripture presents. Amen. But I felt the need um, to go ahead and talk about, um, as you just saw, uh, well, no, I guess it wasn't up there yet, uh, paying pastors. Amen. Give us a brief overview of that. Amen. Uh, looking at some scripture there. And so I don't drag on. Let's go ahead and get right into it. And, and then we're going to look at those questions in a, in a moment after I talk about something else. So uh, paying pastors. And so what was presented in the text uh, Sunday was First Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 7 through 9, and uh, the bold is what I added, uh, this Christian Standard Bible uh, translation. The Word of God says, although we could have been a burden as Christ's apostles, instead we were gentle among you as a nurse nurtures her own children. We cared so much for you that we were pleased to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our lives, because you have become dear to us. For you remember our labor and hardship, brothers and sisters, working night and day so that we would not burden any of you. We preach God's gospel to you. And so uh, it was Paul's um, prerogative. It was Paul's um, uh, nature. Um, it was his standard practice um, that he did not require amen, churches when he visited to uh, put him up. He worked as a, a tent maker. And uh, so, um, again, like I said, Sunday, it was customary for rabbis and teachers of this time to, um, when they come to town, to be taken care of uh, in exchange for their teaching or their preaching or their wisdom, whatever have you. And so Paul is saying, that he did not burden any of them, uh, but he became an example in that he put the gospel first. He didn't want um, for his ministry to be looked at as a hindrance for the gospel. And so, he, as he said, we work night and day, so we wouldn't burden any of you. Amen. Okay. And then here in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 9 through 14, um, the bold print is quoted from the old testament the underline is what i underlined to make uh to uh because that's what i want to focus on first Corinthians chapter 9 beginning at verse 9 for it is written in the law of moses do not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain is god really concerned about oxen isn't he really saying it uh saying it for our sake yes this is written for our sake because he who plows ought to plow in hope, and he who threshes should thresh 
in hope of sharing the crop. If we have sown spiritual things for you, is it too much if we reap material benefits from you? If others have this right to receive benefits from you, don't we all the more? And see, this is what Paul was talking about, the customary practice of the day. But he goes on to say, nevertheless, we have not made use of this right. Instead, we endure everything so that we will not hinder the gospel of Christ. Um, verse 13. Uh, don't you know that those who perform in the temple services eat the food from the temple and those who serve at the altar share in the offerings of the altar? In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should earn their living by the gospel. And, and of course, he uses not only the customary practice of the day, but he uses the Old Testament. He begins with the Old Testament uh, principle. Uh, Do not muzzle an ox while it treads the grain. As an ox is pulling the plow, um, as the ox is working, he is able to partake of his labor. And so uh, Paul, again, uh, says that he has a right, but we did not use it. He says, I did not use it so that I would not hinder the gospel. Amen. And in Philippians chapter 4, verses 15 through 19, it says, And you Philippians know that in the early days of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church shared with me, in a manner of giving and receiving, except you alone. For even in Thessalonica, you send gifts for my needs several times. Not that I seek to give, but I seek to profit, uh, profit that is increasing in your account. But I have received everything in full, and I have an abundance. I am fully supplied, having received from Epaphras, uh, Epirodius, uh, what you provided, a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And so uh, here we have the Philippians. They uh, sought out opportunity uh, to give to Paul to further his his. So we see that Paul did accept gifts, but he did not. Uh, he chose not to burden uh, the churches and believers. Amen. He did accept gifts. Amen. First Timothy verses 17 to 18. The elders who are good elders are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. But the scripture says, do not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain, and the worker is worthy of his wages. Amen. And so again, we see uh, Paul writing to an elder uh, telling elders, <laughs> amen, that, that uh, it's okay. Again, do not muzzle out the ox while it treads the grain. He quotes the same Old Testament scripture as um, in uh, First Corinthians. And so, uh, again, one, one benefit in going through a book of the Bible uh, and preaching and teaching through a book of the Bible, then uh, we're able to talk about these things because, um, uh, you know, it, it's very difficult for pastors um, to talk about uh, being paid. Amen. But uh, as you can see, I didn't go out of my way to talk about this. But rather, it was part of the text, and I wanted to bring some clarification. Paul, in his apostolic ministry, uh, chose, amen, not to be a burden to the churches when he came uh, to them, amen, uh, and so that he wouldn't enter the gospel. So people wouldn't say he's only preaching for the money, he's only preaching for the fame. And so we as preachers and pastors and elders, amen, have to be conscious, amen, not to get beside ourselves, amen, seeking fame or money, amen, uh, in preaching the gospel, amen. Uh, our focus and, and priority should be the gospel of Jesus Christ itself. All right, so the next slide here is something I wanted to show y'all. Uh, it's oftentimes we, you know, I've talked about before churches, big churches are visible. Uh, they're more visible than small. Um, not just because of the size, uh, but because of the size of the, uh, the size of the building, but because of the size of the membership. And, and as a result, they become more prominent in the community uh, just by those physical factors. Um, this is taken from reachoutstudios.com. It is based on a survey. Uh, and this is just something that I wanted to share. Uh, just to kind of put in perspective um, how much pastors make. And, and again, 
it shows the number of responses and, and it shows uh, compensation based on number of years. Um, but we must remember uh, that probably most of the people who responded are not the smallest churches that exist. But I still wanted us to see something because uh, some of this may be alarming to some and, and uh, just hopefully just really make us think. But just looking at one to five years of ministry uh, at a church, it shows the average compensation is $53,000, well, just roughly $53,000 a year, almost $54,000 a year. The high in this survey, $275,000 a year. The low is 1300 and the pay package would include other things like health care and um, uh we call it room and board. What is it called? But um, uh, you know, whatever it's called, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but what I wanted us to see is that even within this year, we have fifty-seven thousand in the high, two hundred and seventy-five thousand, the low thirteen hundred. So putting that in perspective, fifty-three is the average but the high is 275. And you see how weight heavy that is? The 275,000 being uh, the 200 and over $200,000 above the average for the high means is that the, 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 um, the weight of the average is drawn towards that 1300 and not that 275,000. So what does that mean? That means most pastors make closer to that 1300 than they do to that 275,000 or even the 53,000. Most pastors make closer to that $1,300 a year and not the 53,000 or the 275,000. And uh, of course, you know, looking at the averages as it goes on and, and, it's, and it's kind of alarming. Um, I'm sure there's some other factors in that, but what studies show is that average pastor in the United States uh, makes $30,000 or less a year as a pastor. And, and again, there's no such thing as a quote unquote part-time pastor, a pastor has to pastor Amen, regardless of what he's being paid or whether it's enough to live. And so um, just wanted to share that with you because many people have this idea that pastors are only in it for the money. And, and let's be honest, uh, look at education, uh, the standard education uh, for a pastor, the degree, and, and, and most don't go to school to get this degree, is a Master's of Divinity. A Master's of Divinity is 90 credit hours above a bachelor's degree. And if a pastor has a PhD, he more than likely has 60 credit hours above that master's of divinity. And, and this is in private school. And so a lot of pastors go to seminary, get a master's of divinity, and then um, make a little over $30,000 a year. And that's the truth of it. Uh, most, when they come out of seminary, cannot find a church to support them full time. And so they end up having to work anyway, even though they don't went to school. Now, how many of you go to school, get a bachelor's degree or a master's degree and, 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 and can't make any money? <laughs> Amen. Uh, my master's degree in um, accounting and financial management, and I don't want to take too much longer here. Uh, accounting financial management was 36 credit hours. Okay. And I, I couldn't imagine a man, um, you know, being in, in, in a situation in a way. But if I was in it for the money, I would have chose not to pastor. <laughs> That's the point I want to make. It's more money doing other things than pastoring. And some people think, well, you, you pastors, y'all only work one day a week one night of the week you work on sunday and wednesday night yeah okay all right if you say so amen but i'm constantly doing what god has called me to do amen and so i just wanted to share that with y'all amen one thing about um 
being consistent in the word of God and preaching, teaching the word of God. Amen. I, I'm able to do that without, amen, any pushback from Shield of Faith. Now, other people online may just, you know, feel however they feel, but that's on them. But Shield of Faith, no, I'm just going to come from the word of God. So let's let's continue. I wanted to share that because Paul talks about that. And some people, amen, have a problem paying pastors. Amen. And a lot of people accuse pastors and only be preaching for the money. And, and you talk to the average preacher, they're going to ask you what money. They're actually probably putting in more in the church that they pastor than they actually get paid. And that is the truth of the matter. The average church in uh, the United States is probably 80 members. Um, studies show that a church needs 120 members to be able to support a pastor full time. So that means most churches are probably less than 40 members. Okay. And so most pastors are not in it for the money. There's, there's not money in it for a select few, but people only see Christian television. They see the uh, TV evangelists, amen, with the big fancy cars and big houses and big jets, amen. But most pastors are nowhere near that, and that's the reality. Okay, but Paul, has a, he has uh, his prerogative in that he doesn't require, amen, but pastors should be paid. Now, how much is a pastor paid or, or should be paid? That's, that's a totally different Amen. Topic there. Let's continue. Amen. I've talked enough about that. I spent more time there than I wanted to. But I see from this graph that uh, the weight of compensation is towards the low, not the high end. The thirteen hundred is pulling the fifty three thousand down, not the two hundred and seventy five raising it up. So the weight and of course, average takes the total number and divides it by the one hundred sixty nine looking at the one to five years. But if we looked at the medium, the medium would, would uh, show us what the middle number is. And I would be curious to see that because I bet you it, it's going to be a lot lower than that 53,000. Amen. All right. So let's continue on. Uh, you talked about paying pastors there. Um, so now we're going to look at this thing of the word of God. I want to share uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. This is why we consistently thank God because you received the word of God uh, that you heard from us. You welcomed it, not as a human message, but as it truly is the word of God, which also works effectively in you who believe. And so one of the, the key points from Sunday that we talked about was applying the word of God to our, our lives, living out the word of God, uh, that standard of holiness we get that standard from the word of God. And so we as believers cannot just live our life any kind of way uh, without any accountability or establishing our own standards, our own uh, level of accountability. We don't have the privilege of doing that as believers. We have to be guided by the word of God. It is the word of God and the preaching of the gospel, which is the word of God, that brings us into salvation and so how are we supposed to live out this sanctification, amen, this, this aspect of living saved if we're not still walking by the word of God or living by the word of God, amen. And this is why the text says it also works effectively in you who believe. If you truly believe it, you're going to live it out, amen. And it, the word of God, will do its job amen, to transform us, amen, to uh, uh, allow us to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when we believe it and practice it. Uh, we can't say we believe it and then we don't do what it says. Uh, we can't say that, you know, the word of God is the word of God, but I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Amen. We can't do that. We don't have that prerogative. But within our statement of faith here at Shield of Faith, uh, the first section of our statement of faith deals with the scriptures and how we think about the scriptures um, is very important. Amen. Because if we don't believe that it's truly the word of God, then, you know, why believe anything in it? Amen. Why believe anything in it? And so the, our, our statement of faith here at Shield of Faith, we believe that the Holy Bible was written by men, controlled by the Holy Spirit, that it has truth without error a mixture of error, uh, excuse me, that it 
has truth without a mixture of error for its matter, and therefore, and uh, 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 and therefore is and shall remain to the end of the age, the only complete and final revelation of the will of God to man. The only complete, it is complete within itself, and the only final revelation of the will of God to man does not mean that there are not other things that are useful, but there is nothing above the word of God. Okay. Um, um, final revelation of the will of God to man. The true center of Christian union. How are we bound together as Christians? By the word of God. The word of God uh, shows us God's plan of salvation. The word of God shows us how to live out salvation. The word of God shows us what the church is. It shows us how the church should be structured. Uh, the word of God shows us how we are to uh, behave with one another as believers, how we are to approach uh, people. The Bible shows us all. The Bible is the true center of Christian. How do we know about God? We know about God from the word. How do we know about Jesus Christ? We know about Jesus Christ from the word. How do we know about the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit? We know by the word of God. And uh, the word of God is the true center of our Christian union. Amen. We can function as a church. Amen. If, if uh, you know, such and such a book and such and such a book and this book and that book, if we're using all these different books, amen, to structure the church, to, to guide the church, amen. And the Bible is just some, one of the many books that we use, amen, um, then, then there's going to be confusion. And not that other resources are not helpful, but the Bible is the only complete and final revelation, amen, uh, of the will of God to man. All right. And so uh, uh, in the supreme standard, the Bible is the supreme standard. There is no standard above the word of God. There is no standard above the word of God by which all human conduct will the saved are unsaved. How do we know what sin is? The word of God. It gives the standard. How do we know if we're truly saved? The word of God. It gives the standard. Amen. Uh, but not only human conduct, but creeds. This very statement of faith is based upon the word of God. Amen. But this statement of faith is not the word of God. Amen. And if, if this statement of faith contra uh, contradicts the word of God, we are to stand with the word of God and reevaluate the statement of faith. Amen. Because the Bible is the only complete and final revelation of the will of God to man. Um, and then it says opinions should be tried. An opinion. People have a lot of opinions, but we have to weigh our opinions. We have to weigh other people's opinions by the word of God. And so that, that brings in the, the entanglement that I mentioned Sunday, amen. I'm not really going to talk about it, but that was the point that I was making. We as believers, amen, have to be grounded in the word of God. We have to be grounded with the word of God. We have to direct our lives with the word of God, amen, because it is the standard in which we live by, not the opinions of the guru. Amen. Whether it be Will Smith or Jada, uh, Jada Pick, uh, Pickett Smith, amen, in her red table, whether it's Oprah, whether it's uh, uh, Ayanna Van Zandt, uh, whether it's D, amen, uh, you know, uh, their opinions should be weighed with the word of God. And and, and what you're going to discover is they're, they're actually anti-Christian, amen, uh, whether or not they try to present themselves as quote unquote spiritual. All right. So. Uh, of course, by the Holy Bible, we mean the 66 books, the Revelation, uh, originally written does not, um, uh, as uh, which as originally written does not contain or convey the word of God, but it is the very word of God. It, the word of God is not within the Bible. The Bible is the word of God. Amen. And inspiration, and use control uh, in our statement of faith there, but inspiration 
We mean the books of the Bible were written by holy men of old as they were moved by the Holy Spirit in such a definite way that their writings were supernaturally inspired through the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, and free from error because it is the Word of God, as no other writings have ever been or ever will be inspired. Amen. So other things can be useful for us to use. Other books can be useful. Amen. But they have to be weighed according to the word of God. I hope that makes sense. Amen. All right. So questions for this evening. Uh, we'll go through these pretty quick. Uh, opening question. Uh, who do you have in your life that you have a deep amount of affection for? Again, Paul is writing to this church at uh, Thessalonica, you know, he has good things to say about them. He's heard good things about them. Uh, unlike Corinth, there's a lot of issues. So we, we have a longer book to uh, our books, first and second Corinthians, to the church at Corinth because they had a lot of issues that other churches didn't have. Uh, the book of Philippians is a very short book because uh, they didn't have amen so uh the the longer the book doesn't mean that uh it was a uh, uh, better amen it was a lot on that's why it was longer a lot more questions a lot more situations that are being addressed so who do you have in your life that you have a, a, a deep amount of affection for amen who who are the people that you love amen we ought to love family amen. i definitely love my wife my kids grandkids mom dad Amen. Uh, uh, in-laws. Amen. Don't necessarily call them in-laws. Amen. Love them all. Amen. But Paul is, is not writing to his natural blood family. He's, he's writing to his family that is connected to him by the blood of Christ. Amen. And that's the, the point that we want to make uh, for today. Why would Paul want to point back to the results that happened from their why us to reflect on some of the ways we've seen God produce results in our lives, not only in our lives, but in, in those lives of people that we are connected with. You see, when we are connected to a local church, uh, we, we do life together. Amen. We, we, we live life together. And so we become a family. Amen. The church is a family. Amen. And so uh, as a pastor, and of course, Paul is an apostle, a uh, pastor. He, he sees the maturity of the believers and his pastors that brings us so much joy to see believers growing in Christ. Amen. And so we can often, I remember when you used to, amen, and we do it in a good way. Some people do it in a way to, to bring us down or make us reflect on the bad part of our past. But just remembering and reflecting on how, how God has matured us and how we've grown in Christ. Amen. Uh, it's important to see that and acknowledge that in the lives of each other. Amen. Uh, and so it just brings me great joy when somebody says, Pastor Juan, amen. I, I appreciate your preaching and teaching. You, you uh, preached and taught me so much over the years. And I have a greater understanding of the word of God. Uh, because that's what my ministry is, is to, amen, make the word of God understandable so that we can apply it to our lives. We can't live out the word if we don't understand what it's saying, amen. All right, so uh, verse three and four, Paul points to their motives. Uh, what were they trying to accomplish? Uh, obviously, the preaching of the gospel in the work uh, that the gospel and the word would bring about in the lives of the hearers, salvation, sanctification, Christian maturity. Uh, what are some ways that we can have impure motives in Christian ministry? Uh, we can do it for the money. Amen. We can do it for the fame. Amen. Some people will attend large churches because this is a potential customers. Amen. These are people who I can sell my product or my services to in this big church. So I go to church to hand out business cards and to network. Amen. And so our motives are wrong. Some people uh, will join the choir just to be seen in church. Some people preach just to be seen. Amen. Or, or try to make money by preaching. Amen. And so our motives could be wrong. We could be 
Um, amen. Doing it just so that we feel good. Amen. It, that might sound like a good thing. Do things just so we feel good, but that's the wrong motives. Amen. Our motives should be to please the Lord. Why is it critical that we live to please God and not people? Um, as I said, you know, if you're living to please me, I don't have a heaven and hell to put you in. <laughs> Amen. So don't please me. You should be working to please the Lord. If you're pleasing the Lord, I'm going to be happy with you. Amen. But you ain't doing it for me. You don't ever do it for me. Do it because you love the Lord. What happens when we try to please people? Um, we're going to always fall short. Amen. We will always fall short. Amen. We will never be able to please all the people all the time. And we will drive ourselves crazy trying to please people. Amen. Because as soon as they please one minute, amen, uh, uh, Jesus coming into Jerusalem, amen, uh, uh, shouting Hosanna in the highest of people were doing, laying down palm uh, leaves on his path. And then later on that week, he was hanging on the cross. So, amen. You got to be careful with people. Why does living bring freedom? Uh, again, people are never going to be satisfied. God is going to look at your faithfulness. Amen. Not your perfection, because you won't ever be pe perfect in this life, but he'll look at your faithfulness. Amen. Are you faithful to the calling upon your life? Are you faithful to the word? Are you faithful to him in service? Amen. Uh, it brings great freedom um, in Christ when we live our life for Christ. What areas in your life are bound up by living for people? Uh, time, money, sanity, amen, could all be bound up trying to live for people. Amen. Uh, question three. In the first six verses, Paul centers everything around the fact that they worship God and God alone. This is what shapes them, and uh, that is why, when put to the test, they pass. Do you feel like God is the one who's shaping you, or is it something or someone else? Very good question to ask ourselves. Amen. Is God shaping us, or is something or someone else? Now, God can use means uh, to shape us, the preaching and teaching of the word. Amen. Uh, definitely could shape us. Or a long time could shape us. A long time with the Lord, I should say. Um, could shape us. Amen. Um, there are some things that have nothing to do with God that can shape us. Amen. Our, our theology from movies. Amen. From random books. Amen. And placing them above the Bible. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> so we have to be careful. Amen. A very good question to ask ourselves. Who is shaping us? Who is molding and making us? Is it the potter? Amen. Are, are we really the clay in his hands? Amen. Or is it somebody else molding us and making us into what they would have us to be? Amen. And again, we're going to try to please them or are we going to try to please the Lord? Amen. So again, living out our lives the way God requires us to is important as believers. <clears throat> Question four. In verses 7 to 12, Paul uses the analogy of a mother and father. What are the characteristics of a good mother and father? Amen. Type in some of the good characteristics. Amen. For a mother and father. Amen. Uh, what makes a good mother? What makes a good father? Amen. Type in some of those uh, characteristics as I read the rest of this. Uh, how do these characteristics play into caring for people in the right way? Have you ever experienced this with people in the Christian community? I think uh, to some degree we, we ought to, amen, because again, uh, Christian community, my thought is the local church um, where we live out our faith. Um, but the local church, again, is like a family. And so older, um, as Paul says to Timothy, older men should be regarded as fathers, older women as mothers. Amen. Younger women and, and younger men as brothers and sisters. Amen. Because it, it is a family. Amen. So what, what are good characteristics of a mother? Uh, I know the text says nurtures like a nurse. A, a nurse is a mother who nurses their child. Amen. Not uh, already in, in the hospital, but someone who takes care of the child. And so that would be a nurse. And, and some translations say mother specifically and not nurse. 
uh, but nurtures the child, takes care of the child, holds the child close, the infant close, so the child can feel the warmth of their body and feel safe and secure, amen, and feed that child um, uh, with the father, amen, uh, being an example, amen, uh, before uh, the children. And so uh, good characteristics, amen. Uh, the concern is for more than just themselves, amen, a, a protector, uh, as Lady Kizzy said, a protector, amen. A mother will protect her uh, children. I know, <laughs> I know Dad and brother up before about a uh, little chihuahua that we used to have, amen, um, abandoning uh, her litter and allowing a cat to uh, come and, and um, devour her litter, amen, and how that is unnatural for a mother, amen, uh, even, a, even a dog. Amen. I know, uh, amen, when Sky uh, had her litter, amen, she, she wouldn't let Snowball uh, come near those puppies. She would be growling and barking at him, amen. Um, oh, uh, it's probably when Snowball, because he's very docile, but, well, he was docile with us, I should say. But, uh, <clears throat> amen. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Internet was messing up. Um, but anyway, so let's continue on. <laughs> I'll just shut up there. Uh, but yeah, protector. Amen. Protector. That's good, Lady Kizzy. All right. Five. What effect does the Word of God have on us if we believe it to be true and not just from humans? How would you rate yourself on a scale of one to ten when it comes to studying God's Word? Application of God's Word is critical. Why have you applied it to your own life? Amen. What effect does the word of God have on us if we if we believe it to be true and not just the humans? If we truly believe it, uh, again, verse 13 says it effectively and those who believe to bring about the intended result. Amen. The consummation of our salvation, our spiritual maturity, our growth and sanctification. Amen. It brings that about if we believe it and if we be truly believe it, our life is going to reflect it. Amen. And so when it comes to studying God's word, just really think about that, man. If we're supposed to be guided by God's word in this life, then we should be studying it, right? We should be studying it so that we know how to live. If we're not studying it, maybe because we really don't believe it. Maybe we really don't believe that it will do what it said it will do. It's something to think about. And no matter how much studying we do, amen, we can always do more. Amen. Um, it, it can be a lot to study and prepare messages each and every Sunday and Bible study. But, I mean, that can't be all I do. That can't be the sum total of my word of God. I, I got to do more than just study to preach or study to teach. Amen. I need some nourishment, amen, from the word of God on, on a daily basis. And so I have to, amen, study God's word even beyond my preaching and teaching. Amen. And so, uh, again, applying the word, God's word to our life is critical, amen, because it won't have its intended effect if we don't apply it. Again, Jesus said, the truth will make you free. Not the truth you know, but the truth you apply to your life. And so do you really apply the word of God to your life? Amen. I know uh, uh, Pastor Johnny Noble, um, I believe he's in South Carolina, Second uh, Nazareth Baptist Church. I know they've been doing uh, a thing on divorce and talking about marriage and, and looking at the biblical text marriage over the past few weeks and I was able to catch some of that video again <laughs> amen me, uh, Pastor Juan getting nourishment amen not just studying to preach and teach but getting more nour nourishment amen outside of my own preaching and teaching but uh, listen to that and, and really applying the word of God what does the word of God say about marriage what does the word of God say about divorce what are the implications amen uh, when uh, Paul writes to the church at Corinth and, and tell couples, amen, not to deprive one another, amen, of sexual relations. 
amen, uh, for a time except for praying and fasting, amen. Uh, that's important on how we live our life as believers. And God has an intended purpose behind what he uh, chooses to do. Okay, uh, this is the last question, and then we'll pray. Amen. Uh, who are the people in your life right now that need some care and attention from you? Amen. And this is not general. Amen. Uh, at least I'm not going to take the question as general. I'm going to apply it to the text. Uh, the, the people who are in relationship with us um, through the blood of Christ. Amen. Initially. Uh, first of all, and then expound to other relationships because uh, we can, again, be a witness, amen, as we carry the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, to those who are not saved, whether they be in our family, whether they be associates or friends, what have you, amen. And so, uh, you know, who needs attention from you, amen, the gospel, uh, for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Focus prayer for this evening. And, and I, I, I forgive me, I forgot to begin with prayer. So much on my mind tonight. Prayer. Um, but we're definitely going to end with prayer. Uh, specific friends or family to witness to areas of people uh, that you have accountability for studying God's word. This, this is why it's important uh, for us as believers. I mean, even though we can't assemble together physically right now to uh, be gathered online, amen. Uh, one of the reasons I moved uh, Sunday service to 10 o'clock in the morning is to free us the rest of the day, amen. Uh, you don't have to get up and get dressed to go to church. And so we can meet a little earlier. And, and so that frees you the rest of Sunday to, to spend with your family. Amen. And, and so, uh, you know, uh, pray. We may even move it up more. Amen. Because you don't have to get up, get dressed, uh, get up, take, take a shower, a bath, get dressed, drive down to the church, uh, you know, or get breakfast before you leave the house or make coffee. Amen. And, and, and drink that before you get the house. Amen. You can you can hear the word of God online. You don't have to do all that. And so, um, but that will give us that gave that gives us the rest of the day, amen, to spend with family. And then on Wednesday, move it back later uh, for those who have to work. Um, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, again, <laughs> amen, gives you time to get home and get situated a little bit, amen. And so uh, when we're broadcasting, we need to, we need to be online as believers as much as possible, amen. And definitely now that you know everything is live and being recorded. Amen. Even if you miss, and that shouldn't be our intention, miss the, the live broadcast, you can watch the replay. Amen. Don't have to wait for Pastor Juan to load it up on YouTube and all that. It's available immediately on Facebook. As soon as we're done broadcasting, you can watch the replay. Um, but there are friends and family in our life uh, who, who need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, you need to specify uh, people in your life by name. Uh, that God would use you uh, to connect them to the saving grace that we have in Jesus Christ. Amen. And at the same time, uh, be cautious that you're not being found trying to please people. Amen. That you're doing it for the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come today. Lord, give me all glory, honor, and praise. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you uh, for each and every person who are listening to the sound of my voice live. Heavenly Father, Lord, bless those people as well, Lord, who may listen to the replay. Heavenly Father, I ask that you have your way in our hearts and our minds. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will uh, help us and allow us to become more gospel-focused and word-centered in our lives. Heavenly Father, I pray, uh, Lord, that the gospel uh, takes first precedence, that it takes priority in what we do as believers and how we live our lives, that we would be witnesses, Lord, that people not only hear, Lord, but uh, hear with their ears, Lord, but they would hear with their eyes, uh, Lord, and come asking, what must I do to be saved? Uh, Lord, we also pray, uh, Lord, that you, again, your word uh, is centered in our lives as believers, that the standard of holiness uh, that you call us to, Lord, will lead us and guide us 
uh, Lord, in every area of our lives, Heavenly Father, uh, that we would seek uh, your glory, Lord, that we would seek to please you above all else, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we can't uh, proclaim the gospel and be witnesses of the gospel and center our lives on the word, Heavenly Father, if we don't get into your word and study your word and, 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 and be taught the clear, uh, concise and, and clear meaning, uh, Lord, of your word, Lord, so that we can apply it to our lives. Again, not for our glory, Lord, but for your glory, Heavenly Father. We ask, Lord, that you continue to bless each and every person under the sound of my voice, Lord, to, to be all that you uh, would desire for them to be, for your glory and for your name's sake. And Lord, I pray that when all is said and done and we look uh, uh, forward to the blessed hope that we have in Jesus Christ, we will hear one day, well done, my good and faithful servant, enter into your rest. I pray this in the blessed name of Jesus Christ and for his sake. Amen, amen, amen. Well, y'all have a good evening. Amen. I pray that, uh, uh, you know, I, I didn't bore you too much talking about paying pastors. Amen. But I did want to cover that because the text brought it up. And so we'll be looking Sunday at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 17, and uh, through chapter 3, verse 13. Uh, I think that's the whole book. I mean, the whole chapter. Yeah, okay, all of chapter 3. Uh, so uh, just look again at the affection. If you go ahead and read it, and then feel free, but look at the affection that, that Paul has towards uh, the church of Thessalonica. Amen. And so uh, our, our, our Christian bond that we have as believers because of the blood of Jesus Christ and our faith uh, and forgiveness of sin that's available in him. Amen. That bond that we have as Christians should be unbreakable and it should be like nothing else. Amen. That we experience in this world. So y'all have a, a, a blessed evening. Amen. Again, it's Pastor Juan, Show Faith Baptist Church, Oklahoma City website, reallloveokc.org. Amen. Feel free to visit the website to give to the furtherance of this ministry, as well as to submit prayer requests, Sunday morning, online gathering. 10 o'clock a.m., uh, be there bright and early, amen. We've been beginning on time, and I praise God, and, and I hope, amen, the uh, uh, technology stays on par. Sign up for text messaging service, 84576, text the keyword, real love, one word, to 84576. Y'all have a blessed day, Pastor Juan. See y'all Sunday. Amen. Pray for me as I pray for you, and we'll see God's glory together. Amen.